Hi, I'm Mignon Fogarty, and I'm still figuring out how to show you how I record the podcast. So I'm trying a different location in my house today, uh, different from last time. So we'll see if this works. You'll see along with me. We're just trying things out here. Thanks for joining me today. Grammar Girl here. I'm Mignon Fogarty, and you can think of me as your friendly guide to the English language, writing history, rules, and cool stuff. Today, I have a segment about why we use X's and O's to mean hugs and kisses, and a familect story about chickens. Let's get started. If you want to try something fun this Valentine's Day, try typing XOXO into a Facebook comment. It's shorthand for hugs and kisses, and the text becomes highlighted, and if you click on it, the little animated hearts float up on the screen. But how did XOXO come to mean hugs and kisses? Well, the truth is that nobody is absolutely sure. Let's talk about the X first. The earliest citation for X as a kiss in the Oxford English Dictionary is from 1763, and the highly quotable Winston Churchill used it in 1894. But he also felt the need to define it. He signed a letter, Many Kisses, XXX. One theory is that if you use your imagination, the X looks like two people kissing, like the mouth on the left meeting a mouth on the right to create the complete X. But there's also a religious theory. The letter X has been the symbol for Christ since the time of the Greeks, because it's the first letter of the Greek word for Christ, Christos. And as I wrote about a few years ago, that's why you shouldn't get upset about people writing Xmas for Christmas. As the book Kiss and Tell says, quote, In the days of early Christianity, when most humans didn't know how to write, people would sign important documents with an X instead of a signature. The X pulled double duty, symbolizing Christ's cross as well as his name. The signer would then kiss the document as an oath of sincerity. So the theory is that through this act, kissing an X, the X became associated with kissing. I find that theory less convincing, since at least according to the OED, it seems like using the X to symbolize a kiss is a lot more recent than early Christian times, but it's still an interesting bit of history. Using an O to symbolize a hug is even newer, at least according to the OED, which shows the first use in 1948. The O also seems to be used to symbolize a hug only in combination with an X, never alone. The theories about why the O symbolizes a hug seem even more made up than those for the X. People say that maybe it looks like arms circling something in a hug, or that Jewish immigrants use the O to sign documents much like Christians use the X. I've never seen anyone else talk about this idea, but I wonder if it comes from tic-tac-toe. That game uses X's and O's, so the two symbols go together in many people's minds. And if an X means a kiss, then it's not a huge stretch, at least to me, to imagine that its partner from tic-tac-toe could symbolize a hug to go with it. An interesting bit of history I came across while researching the XO symbol is that kissing on the mouth isn't universal. Not all cultures do it. It was primarily a Western civilization thing, at least until modern times when Western civilization started spreading its culture around the world. According to the book History of the Kiss, kissing didn't even start out as a romantic gesture. There are definitely cultures that view romantic kissing on the mouth as bizarre or even disgusting, and it started out as more of a religious thing. Again, according to History of the Kiss, Mesopotamians blew kisses as a means to gain the favor of the gods, and early Christians greeted one another with a kiss of peace, which was believed to carry the soul of the kisser, thus connecting him or her spiritually to the other. Hindus kissed the ground of a temple to acknowledge its sacredness and purity, and Jews kissed the western wall of the holy temple in Jerusalem. All the cool kids are doing it. Before we get to the Familect story, today's episode is sponsored by Earnest. If you have student loans, refinancing them with Earnest could help you save money or lower your monthly payment. Rates are low right now, so whether you're already refinanced or you're still paying the same rate as you did when you graduated, chances are that refinancing can save you money. 
To check your new rate, answer a few quick questions at earnest.com grammar. It takes two minutes and it won't affect your credit score. Ernest wants to give you the easy loan experience you deserve. That's why they offer great customer service and customized loan terms, and they don't charge you fees. Start saving today. You, my listeners, can get a $100 cash bonus when you refinance a student loan at earnest.com slash grammar today. That's a $100 cash bonus when you refinance a student loan at earnest.com slash grammar. Go to earnest.com slash grammar today. Terms and conditions apply. Finally, I have a Familect story from Josh. Hi, Grammar Girl. This is Josh from Bloomington, Indiana. I've got a Familect story for you. Um, so I'm the oldest of five children, and uh, the youngest, the other bookend, is my only other brother. And when I was about 16 or 17, and he was still in the toddler years, um, he used to call chicken bok bok. So every time we would eat chicken, it was called bok bok, and it got to the point where everyone in the family called it bok bok. And now, as an adult, I have children, a few small children, and while we don't use it all of the time, it is definitely a known word in our family that if we say bok bok, we are referencing chicken, and that is what we are eating that night. So thanks for your work. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. If you want to share your Family Act story, the story of a word your family and only your family uses, leave a voicemail at 833214-GIRL, and you might hear it on the show. I'm Mignon Fogarty, author of the New York Times bestseller, Grammar Girl's Quick and Dirty Tips for Better Writing. Subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen. And tell a friend, too. Even after all these years, I still meet language lovers who don't know about the podcast. Thanks to my producer, Nathan Sims, and that's all. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye.